The second derivative test for extrema um, is what we are discussing today. This is a different kind of test, um, and it is used in very particular circumstances, and it should make logical sense. This is not a second derivative test for concavity. That is a different test. This is specifically the second derivative test for extrema. It's probably best to show this in action, and it should make sense to you about where we're doing. We're looking for extrema on f um, as well. That's important to point out that this is the second derivative test for extrema on the original function. So the first thing um, we're going to do with the second derivative test is we're going to look at what f prime is saying. So this is negative 15 x to the fourth plus 15 x squared. And like before, we always express this in a factored form so that we can look at what's really going on. I'm going to leave it like this because we know right away that we have the critical values r. Um, 0 and plus or minus 1. Now, it would be very easy at this point to do a possible um, a first derivative test and to see what that's going. But if we wanted to bypass that and do a second derivative test, we would now look at f double prime. And I would look at f double prime and see that this is negative 60 x to the third plus 30 x. Um, and if I factored that, which we again would want this in a factored form, I pull out a negative 30x and I would end up with a 2x squared minus 1. So what this is saying is that these critical values are possible extrema. So let's look at each of these, these three. Um, first of all, I'm going to look at what is f double prime of 0. And if I plug that in, I get 0. Then I'm going to do f double prime of 1. And if I plug that in, all I'm concerned about is, is it greater than 0, less than 0, or 0? Well, if I plug in 1, I'm going to get something that's less than 0. And if I do f double prime of negative 1, I'm going to get something that's greater than 0. Let's see if you can predict how this now tells us whether 0, 1, or negative 1 are a min or max. If f double prime of 0 is 0, that meant that the concavity was 0, which only could come from something that looks like this or like this. That is neither a min or a max. If, double f, if, sorry, if f double prime of a number is less than 0, that meant that the graph was concave down. And since the graph is concave down, that tells us that we have a local maximum. If my the concavity is positive, that tells me we have a local minimum. So my interpretation statement is, I know that x equals 1 is a local max since f prime of 1 equals 0 and f double prime of 1 is less than 0. That is enough to say that we know that x equals 1 is a local max. You can also say x equals negative 1 is a local min, since f prime of negative 1, oops, oh, sorry, f prime of negative 1 equals 0, and f double prime of negative 1 is greater than 0. I can also say that there is a point of inflection at x equals 0, since f prime of 0, actually we don't even really care about f prime of 0, we know f double prime of 0 is 0. However, I'm going to put a little asterisk on that, only because it's more important that a sign test would indicate points of inflection as changing sign on f prime. So the little asterisk means we don't really use the second derivative test to determine points of inflection. But I do want you to see that that's probably what's going on since it's a polynomial. OK, now if we do this on the second one, let's look at f prime of x equals, we'll go low d high minus high, d low is 1 over low low. And if I factor, I get an x out of the numerator, leaving me with an x squared 
minus one, uh, sorry, a two x squared, oops, I'm kidding, a two x minus two minus an x squared. Um, and that's all over x minus one squared. Um, so I have f prime of x is equal to negative x, then x squared minus 2x plus 2 over x minus 1 squared. So if I do a little quick b squared minus 4ac on this, I get 4 minus 4 times 2 times, or 1 times 2. That is going to be a negative discriminant. Discriminant was the thing underneath the radical in the quadratic formula. Um, we get a negative 4, and since I get a negative 4, the x squared minus 2x plus 2 will not contribute any real roots to this. So my critical values are just 0 and 1. But remember, 1 is excluded from the domain. Well, now we do an f double prime. And f double prime of x is equal to, um, let's see, we got low d high. So low d high is a product rule. I'm actually going to pull the negative out of the whole thing and write the negative as a constant multiplier, so not to worry about that. So low d high is first derivative of the second. So that would be a 2x minus 2 plus second derivative of the first. Um, then I have minus i is x, then an x squared minus 2x plus 2, and d low, so that's low d high uh, minus high, sorry, that was a product rule, I lost track for a second of what I was doing, so low d high is this minus high d low would be a 2, then an x minus 1 to the first power all over uh, low low, x minus 1 to the fourth. So if I pull an x minus 1 out of that whole thing, um, I get a negative. I can track down that I have an x minus 1, then an x. There's actually a bigger set of parentheses that goes around this. So I have an x. Let's multiply this whole thing out. So 2x squared plus x squared is 3x squared, minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, plus 2, and I have minus um, x, let's see, that'd be a 2x, then an x squared minus 2x plus 2, um, and all over an x minus 1 to the third power. Well, let's stop for a second and see what it is we actually need. Do I, do I actually need to multiply this whole thing out um, and kind of try to keep track of all of this going on? So if I do, then great. But if I don't, OK, well, actually don't. I just need to know what f double prime of 0 is. So it's going to be a negative, then a negative 1, then a 2, then a 0 then a negative 1 cubed, which would just be a negative 1. So if I keep track of all of this, I get f double prime of 0 is negative 2. Um, and so since I know that, I don't need to finish the derivative. I can just say since f prime of 0 is 0 and f double prime of 0 is greater than 0, or sorry, is less than 0, um, x equals negative 2 is a local max. Again, because that would come from a region of concave down. Also, we don't worry about 1 because 1 is excluded from the domain of the original function, so it can't possibly be anything. That's it.